say my name. Hi, I'm Lake, the motor oil geek. Have you ever wondered what would have happened if Walter White had made motor oil instead? Probably not, but like millions of people, I enjoyed the series Breaking Bad, especially the chemistry. But you know the business, and I know the chemistry. And since application always dictates chemistry, let's make some motor oil Walter White style. So what do I mean by that? Well, if you remember from our previous video we did here at High Performance Lubricants on making motor oil, if you deviate from the recipe that's provided by the additive companies, you can't license the formula unless you spend a million dollars or whatever doing testing. So that unlicensed formula is basically an outlaw. And that can be kind of liberating actually because now you have the freedom to pick and choose the components you want to match the needs of your application. And in this case, our application is the Wombat. We've been testing the Pennzoil Ultra Platinum in my Porsche Boxster, which calls for a 0W40 Porsche A40 spec oil. But this engine, it's not stock. The honor of the factory pistons in rings and cylinders. We've replaced them with 2618 forged pistons, 0.9 millimeter steel gas ported rings and sumabore coated cylinders. So there's no warranty on this modified engine and we need an oil that can meet the needs of this unique engine. Because so far, none of the oils we've tried have been able to get the wear rate per 1,000 miles down to five parts per million or less. And in that previous video we did here at High Performance Lubricants where we made the motor oil, remember we made a synthetic 5W30 API licensed oil using the Afton High Tech 11183 additive package. But we want to go a little bit different. We're going outlaw here. So based on the test results from those 5W30 oils, and the used oil analysis from my car. I've got a formula that I'm gonna share with you right now to make a 0W40 full synthetic oil for the Wombat. So here's our not so super secret outlaw engine oil formula we're gonna blend up. We're starting off with Spectrosyn Max 3.5. This is a PAO, Poly alpha oil, that's a group four synthetic base oil. And it's a light, so 3.5 is that low viscosity base oil. That's gonna help us get that zero W performance. So we get that really good low temperature cold crank performance, but this by itself isn't gonna be thick enough. We need to boost that base oil viscosity up to provide protection, especially when we get into those thin films. So we're gonna do that by co-blending it with some of the metallocene PAO100 from Chevron Phillips. If you've watched any of our videos before, you probably know this is my favorite stuff in the whole world. I love the MPAO100. This combination of low viscosity PAO with a high viscosity MPAO, it works really good. So we're gonna use that as our base to build this formula. Let's put in 48.2%. So this case we're making even 100 grams of product. So 48.2 grams of this. These guys here at HPL, they're pros. They have all the stuff set up just right to be able to do this quickly and efficiently. 48, boom. 48.2 grams of our Spectrosyn 3.5 Max. Now, we'll start building that viscosity using the MPAO 100. So I need to put in 16 grams of that. This stuff's thick, which is good. 
but it has a very high viscosity index and has great air release properties. And it has some film forming tendencies as well. So all good things by using the high visc PAO. Perfect. All right, now what we're gonna do is transfer this over to the stir so and get some heat in it and get it mixed up well. Turn up the heat. Start mixing. And I do have one secret ingredient that I'm not gonna tell you what it is. That is looking good. All right. So the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna put in two different group five base oils because the PAOs by themselves lack enough solvency to dissolve all the additives correctly. So to fix that, last time we used just an ester, just a group five ester. But esters are polar. They can compete against those additives. So what we're gonna do this time is we're gonna use a mixture of alkylated naphthalene. The guys at ExxonMobil make Synestic, so it's an alkylated naphthalene. We're gonna use 5% alkylated naphthalene and then we're gonna put in just 2% of our secret ester. Let's go ahead and get this blended up because then we can begin moving on and putting in the additives. And because we're not using tons of this, much lower treat rate, now it's pipette time. See, it starts to change color a little bit. All right. 69.2, we're on the money. Put this back here. All right, so now we'll transfer this back and let it stir. And heat up a little bit. Looking nice and clear and bright, which is what you want. It's cloudy, and that's no good. Okay, now it's time for our ester. As we mentioned just a little bit ago, they're polar. They can compete against the additive. So we're only going to use 2% of the ester. This one's kind of a longer chain one, so hopefully that means it adds lubricity without having to have all the other issues that come along with it. So we're just trying to get what we want, creating this really interesting cocktail of different molecular sizes and structures in order to create a blend that will give us all the things we want. The low temperature properties, the high temperature properties we want. We want good lubricity. We want that low temperature flow. We want high viscosity index. We can get all these different properties by blending together these different synthetic base oils to create that interesting cocktail that's fit for the application. Ha, 71.2, on the money yet again. Now we'll transfer this back, stir it, heat it, then we're gonna come back and we're gonna put in the viscosity index improver next. Woo, that baby looks good. It is clear and bright, this is perfect. Of course, now we're going to put in the Lubrizol 7418A, and it might turn a little bit cloudy because, as you can see, this stuff is super thick, and it has that little bit of shimmer to it. It's just what it does naturally. But this is going to be our viscosity index improver. To make that wide split multi-grade, we need something to add some more bulk. We can't do it just by the metallocene PAO alone. What's interesting about this product, it's actually styrene butadiene rubber. So it forms what's called a micelle. So there's little bitty molecules that are actually are attracted to each other to make a larger molecule. And they only will be large when the level of shear is low. So at high levels of shear, high RPM, when you want the oil to thin out actually, it will. So it's shear thinning on purpose only when you want it but it's actually shear stable because those molecules don't break. So it's unlike other polymers that mechanically break down, 
This one has very low shear and it's really good in terms of deposit performance. So let me some Lubrizol 7418A. It's not the funnest thing to handle, but its performance is worth it. 18 grams worth. This is gonna be a lot of work right here. Look how sticky that stuff is. Look at that, yeah. Here comes the tricky part, getting that last, <laughs> not even that half a gram, five, you know, half a tenth of a gram of this stuff to stay on target. Close enough. 89.3. So it went over a tiny bit. Now we gotta mix this up. If we were blending this from components, not the DI package, the next step would be to put in a dispersant. That dispersant would usually clear that right up because it helps disperse those chemicals. And, but in this case, we're not gonna use components to make the additive package. I know how to, we could. In this case, we're just gonna use high tech 111.83. If you remember from the previous video, this is like your Betty Crocker cake mix. You buy the cake mix and all you need is some eggs and some oil, and then you're ready to go. That's pretty much what you got here. This is all the other stuff that's in there. The, the zinc, the anti-wear additives, the antioxidants, the anti-foam, the dispersant, the detergents, everything you need to finish making the oil is in here. So we're gonna use this and then we're gonna add a little something extra to it as part of our outlaw formula oil. And as I said, you can see, adding that 18% of the 7418A definitely has changed the clarity. Okay, high tech 11183 time. This is the GM Dexos 1 Gen 3 API SP additive package. We're using it at 10%, so I need to put in 10 grams. Okay, we've added our 10% of the high tech 11183. So now, back to the mixing plate and heating plate. Woo, look at that. Now it should, now this should clear up. Oh yeah, it's coming along. We'll let this mix until it's nice and clear and bright. And then we're gonna add our final ingredient. Oh yeah, she's looking good now, but she's not done. One more thing to add, and that's the MODTC. Not only does this additive function as an anti-wear additive and a friction reducer, it's also an antioxidant. So when we saw that the previous formula didn't perform as well as the Napa that had a higher MODTC content, we said, oh, we need to add a little bit more to bring it up. Now, back in my days at Joe Gibbs Racing doing the NASCAR formulations, we used a high level of this additive. In fact, if you have almost equal amounts of molybdenum to phosphorus to your ZDP, some pretty special things can happen. So we're gonna add enough of the Molyvan 3000 MODTC to try to raise that molybdenum level and make it equal or really close to the zinc and phosphorus levels that are already in the high tech 111.83. So we're right at 100 grams. Time to put it on the mixer and get it all mixed up. And it's gonna turn it dark, but with that darkness comes some goodness. So now we've got it blended up, it's time to do some lab tests and show you the results. Not only do we have those results, we also have the oil. And it turns out that we've got 4,600 something miles on the Foxster with that Penzo Oil 0W40. So it's a perfect time to do an oil change 
Put in our Walter White inspired Zero W40 oil. Take a sample of that Zero 40 Pens oil, which will show the results in another video. So while the oil is draining out, let's check out our magnetic drain plug and see how it looks. Nice and clean actually, compared to how it's been in the past. This is pretty much the same as last time we saw this with the Penzo Ultra Platinum, which is doing pretty good. So we'll see how this oil sample looks in comparison to the previous sample, because this is the second fill with the Penzo Ultra Platinum Zero W40. And we know what that oil looks like. And we also know what our Walter White inspired Outlaw Zero W40 looks like, because we have those results right here. And as we mentioned while we were blending the oil, we only used a small amount of ester and a little bit more of the alkylated naphthalene. And we can see that right here in the oxidation results. At 15.1 absorbance, we're half of what you normally see on a PAO ester blend oil because there's a lot less ester, more alkylated naphthalene. We still have the solvents we need for the additive package, and that additive package is special. Just like we saw before with the high tech 11183, it's that balanced package of calcium and magnesium, that mixed detergent with the API SP level of phosphorus and zinc, but we boosted up that MOLLE level, that MODTC with the MOLLE Van 3000, back to that racing level. But I say racing, but we've also seen that same high level of MOLLE from the Mobile One Zero W8 and the Toyota Zero W8 and Zero W16. So there are some oils you can buy off the shelf that have these same high levels of molybdenum, MODTC. We've matched that here with this formula. So this is gonna be really cool to see how this boosted Molly PAO ester alkylated naphthalene blend does in the wombat and how it compares because these results are spot on what we were hoping to get now let's go ahead and fill it up and see what happens but before we put in the drain plug we need to pour a little bit of the oil through the engine to flush out that residual in the oil pan to get us off to a good start with our first test fill here's a little tip about filters if you're the kind of person that's only gonna go three, four, maybe 5,000 miles between oil changes, don't go for that high-end filter. Typically, those filters are designed to go 10, 15, 20,000 miles. And to do that, they're less efficient. Just a regular filter could be more efficient over a shorter drain interval, which is why I'm using the standard Wix filter and not the XP. Pins Oil Ultra Platinum out. In with the Outlaw Zero W40 formula, which I've never made this combination before, so I don't know what it's gonna do. It's gonna be really interesting to see those results, and we'll come back with those results in a future video. In the meantime, check out one of these, and thanks for watching.